So let's quickly go through the properties of exponents and then we'll get into some more challenging examples. So the first thing we wanna know is that whenever you have a quantity to the zeroth power, what does that equal? Well, that's called one. When you have a negative exponent, like we have here, x to the negative two, what that negative exponent tells us to do is to take the reciprocal. So what you can think of this as, as one over x to the second. And for product of powers, when you're multiplying and you have that same base, see how these are both x? When you multiply, what do you do to the exponents? You add them together, so that's gonna be like m plus n. And quotient of powers, this is when you're dividing and you have that same base, see how they're both base x? You subtract the exponents, and the order is important. You wanna do the numerator's power minus the denominator's power, okay? And then power of a power, this is when you're raising an exponent to another exponent, you actually multiply these powers together, that's gonna to be m times n. And then power of a product, here's where you have like a monomial, like just one quantity in the parentheses. What you do is you distribute that power to the powers or the uh, exponents of the quantity inside. So for example, here we have xy uh, all to the m, that's gonna be x to the m times y to the m. And then the last one, the power of a quotient, we've got a quotient, we have a fraction, right? Raised to a power, what you wanna do is you wanna distribute that power to the numerator and the denominator. So this is gonna be x to the m over y to the m. Okay, let's jump into some examples here now. The first one, we've got two x squared y, all raised to the zero power. What do you think that equals? Well, like we talked about here with the zero property of exponents, anything to the zero power equals just one. So that was kind of an easy one. For number two, we've got three to the negative three power. Okay, so what do we do on this one? Well, what you can think of is any quantity can be written as a fraction by putting it over one. And when you see that negative exponent, what you do is you take that quantity and you move it to the other side of the fraction bar and make it a positive exponent. So this is gonna be one over three to the positive three now. And then we say, well, what's three cubed? That's three times three times three, that's 27. So this is one over 27. Another way you could do this problem is you could say three cubed is 27, and then because it has that negative exponent, take the reciprocal and you'll still get 1 27th. For number three, we've got negative four squared all divided by five to the negative two. This is getting a little bit more challenging. We've got a couple things going on here. We have this negative exponent here in the denominator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this quantity, I'm gonna move it to the other side of the fraction bar. That's just like taking the reciprocal, and I'm gonna make it positive. So we have negative four squared times five to the positive two now. The other thing you wanna pay attention to is the order of operations. You wanna do the parentheses, which there's none, then the exponents, and then multiplication division, right? So here what we have to do is we have to do four squared, which is 16, then times a negative. So some people will be saying, Mario, well, isn't a negative four squared 16, positive 16? Well, that's only if this was in parentheses, so if we were taking it as a group. But in this case, we wanna do the four squared first, that's 16 times a negative, which is negative 16, five squared, which is 25, and these are multiplied together, that's gonna give us negative 400. Okay, for number four, we have three x to the zero, y to the negative fourth. What do you think you would get for that one? Well, again, I always like to, if it's not a fraction, write it as a fraction by putting it over one. This way, if I see that negative exponent, I can take just that quantity here, not, not the whole thing, just it's affecting just the y here, just the base, move that to the other side of the fraction bar and make it positive. So now we have three x to the zero, all over y to the positive four. Now this zero here, you don't wanna make this whole numerator one. That would be if this was in parentheses, the whole quantity was to the zero power. You just wanna say, well, what's x to the zero power? That's gonna be one times three equals three over y to the fourth, and you got it. Okay, for number five, we've got six to the negative two times x to the fourth over y to the negative third. So what would you do on this one? Well, okay, we see we have a negative exponent. So we're gonna move that to the numerator we see that the six to the negative two is a negative exponent. We're gonna move that to the denominator, okay? But this is x to the positive four. That's gonna stay put. That's gonna stay right where it's at in the numerator. So let's look what we have so far. We've got x to the fourth times y to the positive three now, because we moved it to the other side of the fraction. Six to the negative two came down, so now that's six to the positive two. Of course, six squared we know is six times six, which is 36 and we've got x to the fourth and y to the third in the numerator. Number six, we have seven to the fifth power divided by seven to the third power. 
When you divide and you have that same base, what do you do to the exponents? Well, you subtract them, and you want to make sure you do the numerator minus the denominator. So 5 minus 3 is 2, and then we have 7 squared, which is 7 times 7, and we get 49. So for number 7, we've got 2 to the negative third times 2 to the positive 8. When you multiply and you have that same base, in this case base 2, what do you do to the exponents? Well, you add them, so negative 3 plus 8 is 5, and then we know that 2 to the fifth is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 32. For number 8, we've got x to the negative second power all raised to the third power. Okay, now what do we do here? Well, you can see that we just have that one base, see just x, but we have a power raised to a power, so we multiply the exponents together. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, but when you have that negative exponent, remember how we said that you move it to the other side of the fraction. Okay, you take the reciprocal and make it a positive exponent. So this is 1 over x to the sixth, and that's our final result there. For number 9, we've got kind of a combination situation. Okay, when you multiply and you have the same base, what do you do to the exponents? You add, so 3 plus 4 is 7. When you divide, okay, and you have the same base, what do you do to the exponents? You subtract, and again, remember the order is important. It's numerator minus denominator, so that's 7 minus negative 5, which when you subtract a negative, it's like adding the opposite, so that's x to the 12th. For number 10, we've got negative 3y squared all raised to the fourth power. Now, this one is a little bit more challenging because when you have a negative to an even power, so we've got four negatives, negative times negative times negative times negative. So a negative to an even power gives us a positive. So that's going to give us negative 3 to the fourth, which is uh, 81. And then here we have a power to a power. So what do we do? We multiply. That's going to be y to the eighth. And you got it. Now, one thing I want to point out here is, is that if you don't see an exponent, you can always write 1 okay, as the exponent. And what I'm doing is, see, I'm distributing or multiplying this uh, 4 on the outside to the 2 and to the 1. So 4 times 1 is just 4. So that's how I got 3 to the 4th. And a negative 4 times gave us a positive. Number 11, we've got negative x squared divided by 4 all to the negative third power. Now, this one, what I'm going to do is, you see that negative exponent? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reciprocal of the base. I'm going to take this whole base and flip it over. That's 4 over negative x squared all to the positive 3 now. Okay, so the negative, you take the reciprocal of the base. Now we have a quotient to a power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that power to the numerator and the denominator. Now notice this 4 is really like 4 to the first. When you have a power to a power like that, you multiply the exponents. That's going to be 1 times 3, which is 4 cubed. And here we've got... Uh, x squared, okay, to the third. So power to power, you multiply again, that's going to be x to the sixth. Notice we have a negative to an odd power. That's three negatives multiplied together, which is going to give us a negative. Okay, now 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4. That's 64 over negative x to the sixth. And that's our final result for that one. Number 12, we've got 2a to the negative 3, all raised to the negative 4. So there's a couple different ways to do this problem, uh, but I think what I'm going to do on this one is think of this as 2 to the first, and I'm going to distribute that negative 4, okay, like so. So 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. You can always think of this as being a fraction by putting it over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself. And then because we have that negative exponent, I'm going to move it to the other side of the fraction bar and make it positive. So this is really going to be 2 to the positive 4, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 16. So you're going to get a to the 12th over 16. For number 13, a little bit more challenging here, we've got 3r squared s to the negative third all over 12r to the fifth s to the negative fourth. A couple different ways to do this problem. One is I could distribute that power you know, in like to all these exponents, multiply those together, and then simplify. Or maybe what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to simplify what's on the inside first, then raise it to the power. So 3 over 12, I could reduce that to 1 fourth. Okay, so that's what we've got so far, 1 over 4. When you divide, you subtract. So 2 minus 5 gives us r to the negative 3. Sometimes students get confused. They say, Mario, do I put the r to the negative 3 in the numerator or the denominator? Well, when you do the quotient rule, you divide, right? So you subtract the exponents. But the answer always goes in the numerator. Now, on the next step, because it's a negative exponent, I can move it to the other side of the fraction bar and make it a positive 3. Uh, but I usually try to do one step at a time. 
So now we have s to the negative 3 divided by s to the negative 4. Negative 3 minus negative 4 is really like negative 3 plus 4, which gives us 1. So that's s to the first. Okay, And that whole thing is still raised to the second power. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that power in like so. Okay, So 1 squared we know is 1. Negative 3 times 2 is r to the negative sixth. 1 times 2 is 2. That's s squared. And then 4 squared, because you see this is like 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 4 squared is 16. The only thing we need to do now is take this r to the negative 6, take the reciprocal, meaning we're going to move it to the denominator. And so I'm going to erase this, okay? And we're going to put the r to the 6 in the denominator, and that's our final result. You don't need to have the 1 here. 1 times anything is itself. I'll just simplify that down a little bit further. Last question. See if you can do this one. It's very uh, challenging. There's a lot of steps, but we'll do it together. So here what we've got is we've got these two fractions multiplied together, okay, as well as being raised to these powers. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 2, I'm going to multiply it in like so. Okay, so what I have is 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 squared is 9, because really see how this is a 1. 3 to the first, 1 times 2 is 2. 3 squared is 9. And then we've got y to the negative fourth, because negative 2 times 2. For this one, what I'm going to do is instead, because I have a negative exponent here, is I'm going to take the reciprocal of the base. I'm going to take the reciprocal of this fraction here and write this as 2x over 5xy to the negative 2. And now it's all raised to the positive 3, because that negative just told us to take the reciprocal. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify what we have here now. So this is really like 1, 1, 1, 1, right? If you don't see the exponent, it's like a 1. Power to power we uh, multiply, right? And we have a, uh, this one over here, we have a power of a product, right? See, product, these are multiplied, but they're raised to a power. We're just multiplying those exponents by 3. Same thing with the denominator as well. So this is going to come out to 2 cubed, which is 8, x to the third, uh, 5 cubed, which is 125, x, to, uh, 1 times 3 is 3, so that's x cubed. And then this is uh, negative 2 times 3, which is y to the negative 6th. Okay, and then over here, let's just bring this down. We've got x to the 4th, y to the 6th, all over 9y to the negative 4th. Now, so now we're just going to mu multiply horizontally across. So 8 times 1 gives us 8. Uh, x to the 4th times x cubed, when we multiply, we add the exponents, and the y to the 6th comes along. And then over here we have 9 times 125, which is 1,125 uh, x cubed. And then y to the negative 6 times y to the negative 4th, we add those exponents together, we get y to the negative 10th. Okay, now we've got it all into just like one fraction. And what we can do here is we can see if we can reduce the fraction. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to, but when we divide here with the x's and the y's, we subtract the exponents. So 7 minus 3 is going to give us x to the 4th. 6 minus negative 10, uh, when we subtract a negative, it's like adding the opposite. That's y to the positive 16. And then we have the 1125 in the denominator, and that's your final result. If you want to see more examples of working with the properties or rules of exponents, follow me over to that video right there, and we'll get some more examples in.